gave it all, you know, I gave all my time to this game. I gave, I had zero life. But do you regret that? Social districts, this is social radio, social talks, everything about getting personal with with icons. And um, not just that, man. I think I think we're blessed today. If you're born in the 80s, um, you've, you've heard about this guy. You've watched him grow. I have. I think you've been an inspiration for me and, and a lot of people. Like, it's not just me. It's like my family, my friends, and everyone that you'd come across. Fadi al Khatib. Like it's, it's it's an Thank honor. You. Like it, it's it's weird seeing you being raised at home and, and sitting every single Sunday and watching the games and, and watching you with the family. Uh, I, I don't just see you as an icon. Like you are someone who used to get everyone together, the neighbors, jiran, the ashab, and like put everyone together in that one room and watch and, and be proud of, of something. I think, man, wow, it's goosebumps. Habibi, right? Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, this is this is part of what we do in life. Uh, you know, it's it's not only about playing a game and that's it. It's about letting people enjoy what we're doing. Uh, definitely, the victories and the trophies and the, uh, that we've done to the country and you know, regionally, world worldwide, in Asian uh, cups and the world champions and uh, and uh, championship and then the Arab championship. It's uh, it's an honor to be representing my country, representing the teams I played with, representing my country and playing in Europe and uh, in the world. So <coughs> the big part of it is letting be- people enjoy uh, the victories, the trophies, and all the achievements that we've done. And I was blessed to be part of this, you know, amazing uh, achievements we've made. It, it was. It was. I think it was. It was like you say. You. It was more than sports. It was because even, even as far as I can remember, like if you is a if you played basketball, or if you didn't play basketball, if you were into sports or if you weren't into sports. So regardless, regardless of what you did in life, you followed this like a series. You followed this like a movie. It. It, it was. I don't know how. I, I. I. Until today, I don't understand how connected we were, when. When. When you guys were the role models, you in particular, I feel that things have changed right now. I I, I feel yeah. that era has, you know, sa- sadly enough, had faded away. I don't even know why and how. And and, and I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you one of the reasons because back then in the days, you know, late '90s, if you wanna talk about when we made all the achievements, the country was suffering before that from war and from uh, you know the. Everything that happened, it's happening now again. True. Without the war part. Uh, so people were, you know, they needed something uh, to be happy about. And True. here we came when we won the Asian Championship, when we won the Arab Championship, and we went to the World Championship. And it was the first time in our history to play in the World Championship. And True. It, it was in 2002. And then 1998, 1999, 2001, and, you know, won the Asian championship. We were the best team in Asia. Uh, coming from a small country, coming out from a war, showing our ability, showing our uh, ambitious, showing our hunger uh, to do some, something good for our country. And, you know, that's why people were around us. They needed something to be uh, happy about. And thanks God came basketball. And, uh, you know, that era uh, was probably for 1998 Till 2010, uh, it was the basketball thing in Lebanon. Still ongoing, but definitely everything changed True. Uh, in Lebanon. Uh, uh, a lot of uh, politics politics got involved. In 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 so it, in it, it is. It's true. It's, so teams. politics is involved yeah. in teams. So so th- there was the political parties sponsoring teams. Wow, and that was the yeah. the huge mistake that happened in in, uh, in sports. Uh, when when you're a political party and you want to uh, bring people, you know, uh, more uh, for this specific political party to benefit out from the, sports, the elections, yeah. and that that was their marketing tool. Wow, because yeah, basketball is huge. Everyone was. 
involved in basketball fans and uh, you know um, it was an addiction was it, it, it was an addiction in the exactly. 90s it was an addiction and then it started to slow down and it went why. down and you know things happened uh, uh, went into the bad direction a different direction than when we started it started with Lebanon yeah and the team of uh, Sajas winning yes. the champ everybody were around Sajas and cheering for Sajas I remember a road uh, from our stadium when we won the uh, Asian Championship, going to Ashrafiyi, it takes, you know, maximum 25 minutes True. by car. It took us nine hours to reach, uh, wow. the, the, yeah, to celebrate in Ashrafiyi because wow. the road was, they were closed, people on ground. You have more than one million person on the streets wow. celebrating, dancing, champagnes. Wow. Ra- b- 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 they were, they were, they went crazy. It wasn't uh, religious. It wasn't political. It was it real. It was yeah, real. It, it was, was real. It was uh, it was super real, and they were happy. And uh, you know, coming out from a war, and directly you go in and win the Asian championship, and you're the Asian uh, champions. Uh, that's a huge. True. Uh, so 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 that that was the difference between back then and now. Yeah. That's crazy, man. You see, I've heard so many rumors about politics getting involved in, in, in sports. And then some people tell you, but not really, but yes, but not really, but indirectly. And um, just hearing you say that makes it just more... Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's, you know, it's, uh, concrete. The, the, the thing is that the country itself... Yeah, we know politics you know, is involved in Lebanon since ages. True. But lately... For the past, say, 10 years, the politics are destroying the country. That's and I was offered to be the Minister of Sports for, for the past probably... Oh, wow. And yeah, eight years, and I refused because I've never wanted to put my name into corruption, into True. politics, and I'm... Yeah, definitely, I'm, I love politics, but the good politics. I love to, you know, bring my knowledge, my experience, my, you know... Uh, management uh, experience into the Ministry of Sports and uplifted and start, you know, developing sports in Lebanon. But at the end of the day, this is not my goal. This is not where I belong, to be a minister and that's it. You know, sure. you will definitely then after that, people will hate you, even if you didn't do anything. Politics, man. Uh, Politics, man. No. You know, I've, I've, I was, I was born, in a, I was born in a political mess in Lebanon, and until this day, and I, and I feel, I don't know. I, I, do you have any hope for Lebanon? Like, do you think we're, do you, is there, is there hope? Like, um, um, un, you know, until, you know, Lebanon is smashed. Yeah. There will be hope. Until there will be no Lebanon at all on the, on the. In the world, yeah. there will be hope, um, you know, because Lebanese people are full of hope, and that's uh, that's the main uh, identity of, yes, of, of the Lebanese people: hope, life, enjoy, uh, being happy. Even with the pandemic that's happening in Lebanon now, you see people going out, enjoying. Sure. Even with the with the financial crisis that they are facing in Lebanon, people are living their lives, uh, you know, um, um, happily, and that's. That's a hope. But in the same time, I think the main reason that we reached this point is the people in Lebanon. Sure. They backed up the political parties. They backed up the politicians. They were involved in rising them. True. And True. now they're, you know, they're in a phase that, you know, they're, they're, they're doubting their... Uh, they're paying the price. I, I, I think we're, paying, all, we're, yeah. we're all paying the price. Uh, Definitely. And, and I think I think even uh, me being raised in Lebanon, I, I think we were always brought up in a way that we had to look up to someone. Yeah. That's why even when basketball came, it's like we ignored everything else and we focused on that. On and, be, and, and before that, we were look, focusing on, on other leaders or other people. Like Definitely. some, uh, it's, 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 it's very, very weird. But my question to you is... Um, my first question to you was supposed to be, why basketball? Like, how did you decide and why did you say, this is what I want to do and this is what I want, I, 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 I want to well, focus on? I was, I was super young. Okay. I was playing football. And at the same time, um, I was playing basketball a little bit. But my passion was football. Until I grabbed a ball and I went to the court. And 
there where I found, you know, my blood belongs to this, wow. my life belongs to this thing. And it's, it took me exactly, Jack, two minutes to know everything about basketball, that's, to know how to shoot, crazy. to know how to, you know, it's, it's in... It was in you. In me, yeah. Um, and there where I definitely shifted everything in my life to basketball, I was super dedicated, committed, uh, disciplined to this game. Um, I ignored everything in life uh, just to be this... Uh, uh, you know, great basketball player that came out of Lebanon. And um, I gave it all. You know, I gave all my time to this game. I gave, I had zero life. But do you regret that? Never. I never regret anything I've done because everything I've done in my life, if, if, it's, either, 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 if it's bad or good, if I fail or I don't, I learned. That's, that's the good thing. You cannot doubt things that you've done bad in your life because when you do it, you have to do it. So you see to yourself, it's a bad decision. You learn from it. And you move to, on. You move on. And, you know, that's why I don't regret. Um, but I had zero life. No, um, uh, no life, no uh, uh, night lives, no traveling. Uh, at the later stage, I'm telling you, I'm not telling you at the age of 20s, I'm telling mm. you at 30s, and, and and because I was super committed to the national team in the summer, True. and um, in the winter, I was super committed to my teams, so my focus were, was all about basketball, and how I develop myself, how I challenge myself, how I keep on improving, and, you know, uh, being this uh, model... Uh, role model to the to the young generation, generation. Yeah. and um, uh, there you know I'm I'm getting the you know the prize now uh, because out of all this I learned a lot of things in my life I played in Europe played in China played in states played in in, uh, in the Arab world played in Lebanon so I've picked many things definitely I finished my college finished my school education yeah. and uh, at the later at the early stages I wanted to be a businessman as well. So I started at the, uh, as a businessman in a, in a very young age. And then, you know, I gave everything I have to this game. And uh, now this is what I'm doing with my kids as well. So they have this mindset. They are on the right track. And they know what I faced in my life, what I've done in my life to be a successful person. And uh, that's that's the key point out of everything I've done in my life. You know, to would, would you want them to fall in the same path? Because I, I, I know your son, um, one of your sons in Europe. I think he's yeah, uh, he's, he's he's on the way to become to becoming one of the uh, being signed with with NBA. Is, is that is hopefully? That, yeah. Um, oh. My eldest is 16 years old. He play with one of the biggest teams in Europe, Fenerbahce, okay. in Turkey, and uh, he's definitely way better than me. Way better than me. He's wow. he's committed discipline, have the same mindset, have the same ambitious, have the same, he challenged himself. And um, uh, that's, that's what I gave them. Other than the technicality and the talent, uh, it came from them. And I definitely developed it with them until they are in a, in a phase that this is what I want, dad. And I said, okay, you know, I'm here. If they were to choose something else, would you have... I've uh, never pushed them. You never, all right. I've never pushed them in my whole life... That's crazy, that's to amazing. ...to be a basketball player. Never, I never... You know, until the age of 14, Jihad, exactly. Age of 14. When I saw his, when I saw his talent, and when I saw that this is what he wants, I said, okay, I'm going to back you up. Here you wow. go, you know? My... My, the second uh, Hadi is 14. Now I'm backing him up because I have, I'm 100% sure he's following his brother. And this he's going to be wants. a huge player as well. He's following him to Turkey next year. And I have the third one that he plays basketball, nine years old. I'm leaving him until he reached the age that I see that this is in his blood. Then I start pushing. But I've never, ever came to my kids and told them at the age of 12, 13, 11, 9, 10, go to practice. You want to go practice? Go practice. You're playing sports. And I'm not, you know, I'm happy playing sports, you yeah. playing sports. But when I see that this is their passion, here where I interfere and I start pushing them. But it, come, you know, it came because, 
Jihad Hadi and Jude, especially, and I played for the until the age of 40, and that's the good part because they saw. Yeah, they, they, saw, wit they, they witnessed, yeah, they a, witnessed a big part of your. As a jihad witnessed at least 10 years of my career in a high uh, performance and a high level. He saw me playing in China, he saw me playing in Europe, he saw me playing in Lebanon, the World Championship. He went with me at the World Championship in Manhattan. Nice. So they saw what I suffered in my life, and they are taking the same steps to be better than me, and this is what I want, and this Amazing. is what they want, uh, to, to make or to achieve what I didn't achieve. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow, man. Yeah. To, to you being a role model to your kids and, and to a lot of people, uh, why why have I heard so many times that that you're a person that you don't you, you don't you don't really like people to call you coach? Ever? Why? <laughs> <laughs> because I'm 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 definitely not a coach. But why? Uh, I'll tell you why. Because I don't like coaching, and okay. especially because I used to be a leader in the in the court. So I used to make the, the final decisions. I used to be the decision maker on the court. I used to have the ball when they need me to have the ball. Now sitting on the bench and coaching a team and coming into to a decisive moment that you need to be taking the ball. I'm not there. I'm gonna freaking I'm gonna yeah. be freaking out outside the court. You know, I'm gonna be Definitely, and in, in not in the mood that uh, probably I will ask for a change, sub, and go inside. And go inside and go play. So I cannot be a coach. I don't have the know-how of coaching. Coaching, I have everything that I can give a coach to the coach. I have every, all the knowledge that I can help the coach manage the game, everything, but I cannot be in that position. Now I have... The biggest academy in Dubai. But that's it. But so now you have Champs, which is the biggest academy here yeah. in Dubai. And for me, and and for me to connect that with, I don't like to be called a coach. But here you are. You've opened the biggest thing here. Exactly. But how how does that relate? To, wow. It's a development academy. Okay. We're developing kids, uh, and in, in, uh, within five months, three of our teams are playing in the semi-final in a tournament uh, in the league in Dubai. Uh, add on that, I put the curriculum for the academies. I have a technical director that handles the basketball academy as well, the football academy. But I go on the court, watch, give tips for the kids for 10 minutes while they're practicing with their coaches, with, their coach. with my coaches, <laughs> and I leave. And that's it. Uh, to be on ground, fully dedicated to be a coach, I can't. This is not my passion. My passion is to uh, be a businessman, to handle my business, to, to open opportunities, to help kids uh, reach their goals, and all of that in terms of sports. But to coach, uh, to, to coach a team, it's not my passion. It's not your thing. No, no. So when it comes to business, apart from building, um, let's say, Tramps for me is it, 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 it's something massive, you know. By the way, you had tramps next to my house in Beirut. Yeah. I used to, I used to walk down. And I used to look at uh, players. I'm not a big, I'm not a, I'm not a very sportive yeah. person, but I was always, I was always inspired uh, by it. Not, it wasn't by playing sports. It, it was, I was more inspired by the love that you see between people and Community. that that bond yeah. that 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 that's built by having teams yeah exactly. you know and, and that, that's what, what what's beautiful but what, what what's what's what other businesses are you looking into so there's chance i have i do have okay. i do have in lebanon four four companies okay which are uh, which zone 15 is is one of the biggest disinfecting and cleaning company in lebanon wow man i have tiger's diner it's uh, yeah i heard about yeah, it. I, I saw the tiger's food. diner yeah. one of the best diners that speaks my language you see yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm opening in Egypt now, okay. two locations, hopefully in Dubai soon and in Saudi. I have my barber shop in Lebanon. Nice. Here in Dubai, I have uh, I have a real estate uh, thing in Turkey that I do a lot. Um, in Dubai, I have champs. Now, um, I, I bought in one of the greatest meal plan, healthy meal plan companies in Dubai. Uh, wow. We're going to announce it with, with Chef Layla. Chef is nice. uh, is the biggest chef in the in the region. Okay. Uh, uh, we bought in a great uh, healthy meal plan uh, 
think uh, it would work for me. Or, in, in, indeed, I've tried yeah, a few things, it's, man. It's, uh, no, no, no. This this thing is totally different. Another level. Right. I wouldn't put my name with something for, that, okay, yeah. amazing. And with that, in the same company, we're opening healthy uh, bars inside gyms under this okay. company. Um, so, so this is my my next thing I'm working on now. Uh, so part of it in FMB industry, part of it in the uh, uh, commercial part that there is related to um, uh, cleaning and disinfecting and stuff, and definitely sports. So I think everything is is, to, is going towards a healthier lifestyle. Yeah. So th- th- this is what yeah, direction yeah, you've yeah. taken. The, if if your kids where they go to bars or later on drink or or party until three four o'clock in the morning, is that something you would be like, no? Yeah, definitely. You're and not. They, they you know, wouldn't do it. They, it's, it, it's not in there. It's, no, it's not in there. They're that dedicated, that dedicated uh, to basketball, and they know that this goes against this. You know, going partying and going out, that's fine, you know, occasionally, not, not making regularly. it a habit. Yeah. Uh, they know that I've never uh, went into uh, this lifestyle. I've never been into clubs or even at my age now, but because it was my culture, yeah, yeah. it was my lifestyle. I cannot fit there now. Yeah. I go definitely dinners, pubs. Yeah, you feel like if you if yeah. you were to go to a club, you would feel out of place. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't feel myself. Yeah. I wouldn't feel that you know. I don't drink. Yeah. I you know I enjoy music. I enjoy pubs, nice right. dinners in a pub. Uh, but like clubbing, clubbing, this is not where, you know, I see myself in. Uh, Jihad lives alone in Turkey. He's by himself. He's 16 years old. Man, he's, he's more dedicated than my, than my early ages. Wow. Uh, he's super dedicated. He's committed. He's never, you know, his friends once invited him to their houses. He saw something that, he didn't like. He didn't like. He saw them drinking beer, smoking at the age of 18, 19, because he, pl- he plays with the, with the under-20 uh, team. Okay. So the second team after the uh, Division One team. So he said, and he said, this is my last time. I'm, I'm going to this place. So there I knew that, you know, Jihad is that committed. He came and he told me. That's the first Just, great wow, sign. That's, that's... Second sign, he stepped out from this life, and he said, I'm coming here to go to school and play basketball. And it's harder for him now because in his age, it's different from your age because at, at, and this time right now with with technology, with Instagram, with Facebook, with, with, with all of it, so much temptation that comes your way. So the dedication it has to be so much stronger. You have to be so much more dedicated because I think before we didn't used to see. Exactly. Uh, now it's there, yeah. and every and you have access to everything. Exactly. Anywhere you are in the that, world. That's why. That's where we come as parents. That's where we, you know, we 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 tell our kids that the social media hurts more than it, yeah. you know. You have to benefit from social media in a way that you spread awareness. You know, that's. That's my social media. It's all about spread, spreading awareness. It's all about showing my family, my life with uh, my family, showing how I'm dedicated to my family, how I'm dedicated to my work, my businesses, how I'm dedicating to sports at the age of 44, and you're that fit, and you're that you know yeah. committed to sports, and you're working out daily, and you can you know, be a great uh, fit, uh, uh, for uh, as an image for yourself and for the people at later, you know, at age of fifty and and and, so that's my that's my social media is all about this and they understand this and this is where they want. They Jihad doesn't post any post about a video playing a game or anything. Probably a picture, you know, with a ball. He doesn't want to, you know, show. Yeah, hey, uh, I'm playing in Turkey. I'm playing in mm-hmm. Europe. I'm playing this. But why not? I'm, I think he's aware that it's not the age now that to he do, needs yeah. to do this. He needs to reach somewhere to start showing people and uh, you know spreading the awareness and you know telling people about his story. At this age, he didn't reach anything yet. He didn't, you know, uh, uh, did any achievement yet. So sometimes it hurts. Uh, uh, it will get the fire back on you when you are 
uh, showing off on on oh, social and, and media. I, I got exactly you know, what you're saying. That, and he's aware, and he knew that you know this is where I didn't. Uh, that's what I didn't do in my life, and he wants to take the same. So work, uh, work, in si- work in silence, and then once you exactly when you achieve and you're success uh, successful person, and you are on the top teams, and you're playing, and you're in uh, Euro League and or NBA. Now, okay, you're you're there. You can, aw- you know, spread awareness. Tell people that you started from here. You suffered living away from your family for years. To achieve your goal and achieve your dream, and now you can do this. So talking about the NBA, um, I've heard obviously back in the ta- back in the days you you had an offer to Clippers, to, yeah, to to join. Why? Well, it's, it's it's a sad story because uh, after the World Championship that we played in 2002, and uh, the you know what I've done in in the. And this World Championship was was amazing because I was ranked the fifth in the world in scoring. I was the ranked That's the first crazy. in steel, and I got offered from uh, Sacramento wanted me. Okay. And then the team I was playing, I don't want to name the team because it's it's uh, my favorite team. Uh, the team I was playing for some people on the team they they did the right click to stop me going there, and uh, I was in contract with uh, with that team and. Oh. Uh, before I leave to States, they literally told me, you know, when you enter the NBA, we're going to be the first people watching you there. So when when people were, were you know, it was known that Sacramento wanted me. They had a call with them. They sent my contract to them that is under contract. We're not going to release them. Uh, so I had a call with the, with the president, and he told me, don't worry, you know, go ahead. Then Clippers came in, and I was in the vet camp, and I was all in, and the same thing happened again. And they said, you know, we cannot sign you before, you know, you have your release. And they refused to give me my release, and then it stopped there. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm, listen. Are you, yeah, how do you take that, though? A lot of people say that, uh, yeah, it's, it's bad, it's bad. But, you know, you never know. Uh, this happened in my life, and I created an amazing family. I have I'm, I'm I'm super proud of what I've done in the in, in Lebanon and to Lebanon and in the region. Probably if I was there, I wouldn't have done this. I wouldn't have my family. I wouldn't have you know all the directions that I've taken. So that's that's a sign from God. You know, yes, okay, you didn't go to the MBA. Hopefully, my kids will will do it. They will achieve what I didn't achieve. I've done everything besides NBA. So, um, you know, I'm happy. I'm happy uh, with my life. I'm happy with my family. I'm happy in my business. So that's that's what it's all about. Do you, do you, do you still get in touch with every with people that you've worked with in the past? Like yeah. Your, your team players? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, Definitely. And there's yeah. no bad blood. Everything no, no, is good. No, no, no. There, there, you know, there will be always, you know. There will be something. When you're in that position, there is jealousy that it's, there is both. Good okay. jealousy and a bad jealousy. Good jealousy that they want to be like you and they support you. Bad jealousy that they want to hurt you. So sure. I have both, uh, and that's fine. I, you know, I live with that. That's you know part of our that's life. Part of uh, life. Yeah, true. and uh, I understand them. Even the people that did try to hurt me, I was, I'm, I'm good in, on good terms uh, with them until today. I have very close people, very close coaches, very that. I worked with them, and they try to always spread bad uh, points that doesn't exist, uh, just to you know uh, spread it. And uh, you know, with that, I live with that because you know this is life. You cannot, um, um, you cannot, uh, you know, uh, have everyone uh, with you. And supporting you and pushing you. Yeah, yeah you impossible. will have people going against you, and you will have people supporting you. So, if you were to look at the teams now, if you were to look back in Beirut right now, look back to Lebanon, and, and look how the the basketball, the, a dream that for me, you guys were the dream team, yeah. and, and look at it right now. What what are your what are your comments on on, on, on well, the team right now uh, on the Lebanese national team? Well, uh, and other other. Uh, we need we need to work on. A lot of things for the new generation to work on the new generation, on their mindset, 
on their egos, and that's a huge part. As well, fans, they need to understand that they need to support, not get them overrated. Uh, third thing, the country is suffering. We need to have you know, Lebanon back on tracks for them to be able to... Because now, Jack, if, if I'm an athlete or I'm a basketball player, if I'm gaining this much from basketball and I have to dedicate my life to it, but at the same time, I have my degree, I have my certification, I can go outside, work with it, with a better income. True. So why I hurt my life for 10 years and then I cannot find a job while the income cannot, you know... That's so true. Uh, yeah, so there, there is the, the gap happening. So what would you advise? So right now, people in Lebanon who... This is their passion, this is what they want to do. They want to follow your footsteps. Right now, this is where they are. They're in Lebanon. What, what message would you have to them? First of all, look at their future. They need to know what they want in, in their life. They want this. You have to be committed to this. You have to be committed to your uh, uh, trainings, committed to your basketball, committed to your sports, committed to whatever, whatever you're doing. And have a goal and a plan and work on it. So it, it, it doesn't happen that, okay, you're a, you're a basketball player and you're a young player, and I will see what will happen with the, in, in mm. my life. This doesn't work. You know, you have to give it all, either here or here, for you to achieve something. But giving half here and half here, you'll end up losing here and here. True. You know, you have to be committed. Definitely, you have to finish your education. You have to have your certificate, a degree, and everything. So you are in, a, you are in the same side. Whenever you fail here, you can. But but but, but there've been there've been a lot of stories about very uh, like there is there's a lot of uh, successful basketball players who've who've either dropped out of college, thought that this is the right way to, to do it, and they have also succeeded. Um, and also vice That's versa. Yeah. You're talking about... So what is the difference, though? I'm just yeah, very, very talking, curious. Is it because the Lebanese or the Arab mindset, this is what it is? Okay. Or, or? It's, very, it's very simple. Okay. You're talking about millions of millions of dollars in, in the contracts. You're talking about uh, you cannot sustain your life, you cannot build your life I got from you. these contracts. So dropping the college, going directly to the NBA... You're talking about high-level players to drop college, go from high school to, to, to the NBA. You're talking about at least $20 million per contract. They can sustain. They can live yeah, their yeah, life. Yeah. They can continue and educate their, uh, themselves. Here, you drop your college. You drop your degree. You cannot, you cannot live... Yeah. I mean, a year ahead. Sadly, sadly, even with your degree, you yeah. can barely do anything so, right so now. Th there is a huge difference. You have to have it. I'm, I'm pushing my kids to finish their degree while they're playing basketball. And whatever it is, online, <laughs> uh, going to college, but they need to have their degree and then continue their, uh, their life with the basketball. All right, and and have you when you were starting uh, your career? Is there any is there anyone specific that you used to look up to as Michael a, as Jordan? Michael Jordan. Yeah, that's crazy. Definitely, man. he's he's uh, he's the, uh, he's he used to be my mentor. My I I practiced with him for two months. Wow. For my yeah, he, he spoke about me in New York Times when I was with the, in them uh, with him in two thousand three. Wow. Uh, he's my mentor. He's the guy that I loved basketball. Uh, and if he's, if there is one thing that he taught you, what would that be? So uh, my, uh, mental toughness. Man, he's in another word. Wow. We're talking about mental toughness. How mentally tough he is. Another word. Whatever you say technically about. All the NBA players that they're playing now, yeah, uh, he's better than him in shooting. He's, he jumps more, he finishes more. The guy, what he got in here, what I saw in the two months I was working out with him, I've never seen with any creature in this world. That's insane. He's super mentally tough, super. His mindset is challenging, he challenged every single person on the court. You're good or bad, 
But when you enter the court, he's going to smash you. Wow. Your son, is, uh, you are his son, you are his daughter, you are his wife, mother, father. He's going <laughs> to wow. smash you. The guy, mentally, he's, he's in another world. Yeah. That's, I've learned a lot. I, that was the switch in my career. I definitely used to be a good basketball player, and I achieved the, you know, the best player in Asia before going there. But when I was with, when I worked out those two months with Michael Jordan, it switched everything in, in, in my life. Everything. So because we used to practice fitness in the morning, pick up games with all NBA players in the afternoon. He's involved. He picks me on his team. He gives me those, this motivation. He teach everyone there that, you know, don't mess when you're on the court. He challenged himself a lot. Um, um, uh, that's what really... Uh, you know, uh, I took this from him a lot. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's insane. And, and you, you, do you what? Do you, do you show your kids uh, previous games? No, yeah. they from, watch from Jordan. They, 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 they do. They go they, back in that. They uh, go to you. They go to YouTube. They watch they all watch the games. Them. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they um, um, they always enjoy that. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Fadil Khatib, 2022, what, uh, 2023, what's, what, what's the next big thing to expect from you? Uh, Champs in Saudi. Uh, nice. Uh, the company I'm opening now, the Healthy Meal Plans. And, um, you know, I never stop. I don't sleep, you know. Uh, sleeping to me is a waste of time. That's amazing. That's, that's what I tell my wife. So, <laughs> I barely sleep because I love to be productive stay active da uh, productive daily so i don't stop i always you know try to work out opportunities stuff and um, and you know all my friends are by fadi how do you manage everything here you know everything in lebanon everything in, and now in egypt soon in saudi and you have champs here and yeah. you have uh, your work in uh, in turkey so and it's all about how you build your team your management, your structure, and structure it well. Here you go, and then you move on to the next one. So that's that's a big thing for me to you know keep monitoring. Definitely, I need to slow down. And but you don't think of giving yourself a break, being like you know I've hustled since such a yeah. young age. I kept uh, on hustling. But when when is it for you to I'll come and you. say the tiger needs to rest? Yeah, I'll tell you when. Uh, that should have happened. This year. Okay. But, you know, after what happened in Lebanon, and we lost. That's, that's, yeah, that's after crazy. What, you know, I've lost, uh, you know, my companies are suffering. Uh, we're, thanks God, standing on our feet in Lebanon as, as uh, the business. Uh, but does it make me go and retire and yeah. sit and enjoy? No. Uh, that's why I'm, I still have four or five years to go. And there, after those four or five years, um, I will be... That's it. I will retire, yeah. I will have everything set, going on, you know. Uh, you know, uh, the team is ready. And I will monitor and, you know, supervise from... Uh, but I need definitely a break. It's been 26, 27 years. Yeah, but just listening uh, to yeah. these stories, for me, yeah. it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's mind-blowing. It's, it's hard because I used to be a workaholic into... Uh, in the sports industry as yearly, no break. Barely have two weeks in the year break. Uh, definitely the day offs between games. But um, in general, the first time we went, me and my wife, on a trip by ourselves, it was after having three kids. Wow. Yeah, and it wasn't to Dubai. Uh, the second one, because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm part of the FIBA technical committee yeah. i had um, um you know i had a meeting in geneva and the headquarters you know at the, as the so committee. you turned that into a into a trip yeah she she came with me we had two days and uh as a meetings and then uh i expanded it for four more days and then and, and that's it and it's hard you know it's yeah, hard it on, on, on hannah yeah, it's, it's, it's very challenging but uh, she accepted you know she enjoyed it because, amazing. Yeah. because we were uh she was 13, I was 15 when we start, uh, you know, uh, talking to each other. So wow. we were, and I, she saw everything. And she saw my, the, the time that I switched to, to be a professional basketball player, 
she grew up with me. She was with me all the time. And she understands this. Although she's definitely, she tells me, you know, for me, I'm fine. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy we have, you know, this family. And you're always with us because I try to give my full time to my family. No outings, no friends, uh, definitely yeah. couples that she needs to go uh, with me into when we're going out so I don't miss the opportunity, stay with my kids as much as I want on a daily basis. And she tell me, you need the break, not me. So oh, wow. she understand this and you know, there is a time for, hopefully, if, we, if God gives us uh, more time, more life, we're going to enjoy later on. Oh, I'm sure you will, yeah. man. I think everything yeah. is gonna, gonna, gonna pay off. Uh, and Dubai, D- how is Dubai treating you? I love Dubai. Man. It's crazy, yeah, right? I love. I, the, l- listen, we we're talking me and uh, Gael now on uh, the way here. I was telling her there is two different type of people. If uh, either you love and you fall in love with Dubai, or you hate Dubai. You're right, you're I'm, right. I'm uh, with the people that I love Dubai. I've been coming here since 1998 before Sheikh Zayed Road. But now you actually moved here. So yeah. th- but it, it, don't you feel it's, it's a different experience? Like Definitely. coming for vacation is something. Yeah. And, the living and then here, living here. Yeah, it's totally different. Yeah. It's more less hectic. Uh, no headaches. Everything is clear. Yeah. Uh, you don't you have to only manage your time because it's the the pace in Dubai is super fast. fast. Uh, you have to manage this. And, you know, enjoy your family, enjoy your work, enjoy your growth, and enjoy your what you're doing. And that's it. I feel, I feel that this is what they, they let you do. I think they're so transparent in everything. And you, there is no headaches. There is no hidden agendas no, or like, no, no. you know, oh, we're going to catch you here. We're yeah, going to yeah. do it. No, it, it's so clear, like you said. And it's amazing because I've also just recently, I used to come and leave Dubai every year, come for a few months and then go and then come for a few months and go. And then recently, obviously, with everything that's been going on, I decided to just stay put in Dubai. And I was amazed by, oh by my God, we can actually live life like this, Definitely. worry-free. How does yeah. that make sense? That's exactly. crazy. Amazing. Anything you want to add? Well, I'm, uh, uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, you guys are... Uh are part of, uh, of us and our family, and uh, we're close friends to everyone here. I love the place, I love the show, and uh, I watched a little before. Yeah. So uh, thank you for hosting me. It's a pleasure, and, man, to uh, have you here. Hopefully, uh, we'll see you at uh, at Champs. Definitely at Next Champs, time. and I'm going to try out your yeah. uh, <laughs> your uh, your meal plan. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's uh, it's gonna it's it's super tasty. That's that's the added value of what we're doing. We're working on herbs and uh, a lot in our uh, uh, menu. And the chef is doing amazing stuff because now you eat healthy. You don't enjoy the taste. True. You're going to eat... Trust me, yeah, true, because I've tried so I much. Know, and I then know. Now you're going to eat healthy. And enjoy it. Enjoy it more than enjoying your... Normal uh, uh, food that you. That's you amazing. Taste. Yeah, we're doing stuff that no other companies are doing. Additional things that we're pu- putting in the packages, uh, stuff like this. You know, a little bit taste and identity for us, and uh, you know, hopefully it will be uh, good because this is all about my life, um, healthy lifestyle, uh, health awareness, sports, and and this fits me a lot. So, so I'll never, I'm never going to see you in a club. So I'm a DJ. I would never see yeah. you in a club. But yeah. uh, but it's like a so coffee shop here. You could hang no, out here. We were here totally last yeah. time. We were here last time. Okay. I, I invited the, the, the you know the champs team to uh, the management and the, you know all the staff here, and we had an amazing dinner. Nice. Uh, it was it was really amazing. I loved the food here. Man, the food is is one of the it's best in the town. Uh, it's really amazing, and um, what the what the guys are doing is is definitely uh, an extra step and one True. step uh, further than anyone in, uh, in Dubai, and that's the good thing. The the music is amazing, the atmosphere is nice, the food is amazing, so that's what you you want. Social District, yeah. if you haven't checked it out, you should. Definitely, man. you should. Definitely. Fantastic. Thank you so much Thank for you, for being here with me, Pleasure. man. I really Pleasure. appreciate it. Uh, again, it's an honor to be sitting with you and having this conversation with you. This is something. You can show your kids later on. I can show my kids later on. You, you don't have to show your no, kids, you know. You. But, um, but man, pleasure. Thank really. you. Thank pleasure you. is mine.